All right, let's go. 2023 Indian Sport Chief Impressions and the story of riding this bike from a foolish multiple chief owner like myself. I bought five last year to be exact. Don't ask me why, but you know, I like bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear god india <laughs> this thing's fun riding sport chief keep in mind that this is only my opinion there were other people out there with different riding styles different riding backgrounds different bikes in their garages different wants out of their bikes so definitely make sure you check everybody else out i'll leave links down in the description to catch you up to speed, the Sport Chief is a new variant of the 2022 Indian Chief, which was reintroduced and redesigned in 2021. Essentially, it's the same motorcycle with a different attitude. Same chassis, Thunderstroke powertrain, ride command, power mode, cruise control, you know, same design language. I'm in a unique position where I have an Indian Chief frame here. It's being powder coated, steel tubular frame, and also the motor that is in Sport Chief that I've rebuilt. This is a 116 Thunderstroke motor. I've also had it powder coated. And also we have an Indian Super Chief back there with the 111 Thunderstroke. Great motor, it's going in this frame, but the duck, the duck is, the duck's not included. This Sport Chief, it's an additional take on bringing a more sportier air-cooled cruiser to the market. The Chief Dark Horse already is pretty fun, so overall, I'd say with the Sport Chief, they took it up a notch. Riding Sport Chief, this took place in the heart of Austin, Texas. And as they say, everything's bigger in Texas, but the Chief variant, or well, the sport sheet variant, it is very similar to the other ones. It has that 665 pound dry weight and with fluids, gasoline, oil, it comes in with a wet weight of 685 pounds. It has a low seat height. So all those short riders, you don't have to worry about it. You should be able to flat foot it. And also the bigger riders that are taller and they want something bigger than a scout, but don't want to go full touring. This is where the chief fits in between scout and the big touring. So yeah, it's just a bigger feeling bike compared to the scout lineup. The weather was good to us, so there was no need for us to keep those wheels moving slow from, you know, damn roads, but this gave us a good opportunity to push Sport Chief fully throughout the day. And Austin is known for its culture, its brisket and cool moto shops, and Sport Chief, it fit right in that group. For reference, I'm 5 feet 10 inches and I weigh around 175 pounds. Sitting on Sport Chief, I'm able to flat foot with a slight bend in my knees and I reach the handlebars comfortably. And these are the 6 inch risers. And these, for comparison, are the mini apes on Indian Chief Bobber. So they have a similar sit and feel. Sport Chief comes with a number of new add-ons. And the beautiful thing about the Chief platform is that you can take those parts off Sport Chief and put them on Chief Dark Horse, Chief, Chief Bobber, Chief Bobber Dark Horse, Super Chief, Super Chief Limited. And you can take parts off those bikes and put it on your Sport Chief if that's what you want to do at some point. So it's a modular platform. On Sport Chief, you can expect 4-inch Fox rear suspension, the Syndicate solo seat, dual 4-piston monoblock front Brembo brakes, KYB Indian Challenger 43mm forks tuned specifically for Sport Chief, 3 fairing options, low, mid, and high, and either 6-inch or 10-inch risers with Rod Command relocation with a standard wider handlebar for more aggressive riding. Other features, you get a new cast aluminum wheel to fit two 320 millimeter rotors up front, new front fender with longer brackets to mount to the forks, new machine upper and lower triples to fit these 43 millimeter forks compared to the 46 millimeter on none Sport Chief models, and also a primary cover hiding a slipper clutch standard on 2023 Indian Chief. A lot of goodies. A Sport Chief has overall an inch higher in ground clearance. 5.9 inches compared to 4.9 inches, but it's still easy to flat foot for shorter riders, so no worries, you're covered. All right, folks, I'm here with the crew, and it's time to ride the Indian hey, Sport folks. Chief. Welcome yeah. to Brandon Picasso's video. <laughs> Blockhead cam. So yeah, better hop on these bikes and get some riding in, so let's see how this thing does. You guys know I'm no stranger to this bike. I am curious if the rod command is going to be more responsive. I do like how we have this relocation here, but it is not adjustable. But we will see today is very bright and we're going to see how well this thing reacts with the sunlight. But after we were breathed, we were off on Sport Chief through the streets of Austin. I started on the stealth gray option with the mid fairing and six inch risers. The first thing I noticed was how well this works for my height and how I sit right in line with the fairing. The bars felt great. The mid controls are standard on Chief for aggressive riding and they also felt okay. 
This thing's easy to maneuver with the bars up higher. Windscreen is doing a pretty decent job at keeping that wind out of my face. I've had my visor open this entire time. Now granted, I don't know how this is gonna work on the interstate, but oh, peg scrape. Oh, <laughs> wheels dancing. <laughs> Whoopsie. I'm saying this as someone who is not the biggest fan of mid controls. I do prefer forwards, but I understand why mid controls exist. They allow us to corner more aggressively. Some people just like that standard sit. When my bars are lower and I have mid, mid controls, it tends to put more fatigue in my shoulder blades and my back. But when my arms are raised more up, in this case, the six inch and the 10 inch risers, the mid risers or the mid controls, the mid controls do work better for my height. So it really just depends on who you are. But for me, when I'm in traffic, constantly taking my feet on and off the pegs, it works best for a taller setup. And with this case with Sport Chief, six inch, 10 inch risers with the mid controls, it does work better than the original Chief with the mid controls and the drag bar setup. So less hunched over, more upright, it works. At the first stop, I wanted to check out the Rod Command and see if they made any performance improvements. There were no obvious new features, but it was still a clever way to pack infotainment in a four inch screen on a bike like this. You're getting digital gauges, selectable power modes, media playback, phone control, navigation, and other information about the motorcycle. It really is a great package. It took a few minutes for it to essentially catch up. It already had a prior route in the Ride Command, and it was essentially trying to pinpoint where I was to recalculate, but it took I know it took over three minutes, and for a lot of people, that's just simply not acceptable. It's a little disappointing, but it's more responsive though, for sure. It's just not finding that location. Hmm. Rock Command is not perfect, but when it does work, it is a great experience. Yes, it could use Android Auto. Yes, it could use Apple CarPlay, this Chieftain. It has Apple CarPlay. When you plug that phone in, it, it is an even better experience and an extension to Rod Command. I know a lot of people are buying Chief or are interested in this platform for the four inch Rod Command screen. And of course, Indian put it on the new FTR Sport lineup. So I am very critical on it because I want it to work. I want it to work, work well. And when I see it working, I want it to work like that all the time because it is just really awesome. So, fix it, it needs work. <laughs> but I can tell you they did add a no dirt roll feature. So, I rode a Super Chief Limited a long time ago and when I was using the Rod Command, it kept routing me down dirt roads. So, yes, the no dirt roll feature is there, glad to see it. As our story with Sport Chief continued, the wind began to pick up more as we got deeper into the Austin Hills. This has given us the opportunity to really feel the benefits of these windscreens. Let's see if I open my visor up. Going on 55 miles an hour. I do feel the wind still in my face. It's obvious. Closes. Not bad. I could do this. I could do this just as this. I actually like this. This is comfortable. And this is the compromise between the look and the function. So I'm not too big on really tall windshields. Windscreen, windshield, fairing. It's fork mounted, and I can tell you that it really does work well. And now that I've ridden the bike, I'm able to appreciate the function that it provides versus solely just focusing on the way it looks because looks are subjective. In 2021, I put over 1,700 miles on a Super Chief Limited in a single weekend, and I credit my reserved energy on that trip to the windshield and not being completely soaked from the rain. Well, we still got soaked, but it, it definitely was a memorable ride. Okay, back to Sport Chief. Each of the fairings are fork mounted, so they turn in the direction of the handlebars versus a frame mounted fairing that always remains straight. The six and a half inch fairing is a solid compromise between function and looks. You aren't protected from crosswinds on either of these fairings, but one issue that I didn't have a problem with is buffeting. Super Chief Limited with the windshield is notorious for buffeting as air comes under the windshield and rattles your helmet. The cutouts in Super Chief's fairing and the slits on the bottom, it sucks air in and they redirect the lower incoming air creating a better riding experience. As it is, and uh, you know, this one works good. And he said, of course, obviously that was taller, so it works even better. But he's saying how this, with his low rider, it, it reminds him of his low rider S and uh, it just, it's just, it just works. So yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> it just works. So, you know, these, these windscreens are not, I mean, obviously they're windscreens. They're not just for function. They actually have a per, I mean, they're not just for looks, they have a function. Uh, and, and they do do a really good job. So for me right now, I would definitely go for this lower one because it, it's, it's definitely giving me a, a good experience. Seeing Sport Chief with the fairing and then seeing a Chief without the fairing, I tend to appreciate it more because when you look at it, your eyes follow that fairing and then it goes along the body lines of the bike because there are body lines sculpted in that fairing. So it's not just a rounded piece, like they just threw a fairing on there. There's actually sculpted parts of the fairing outside of function that make it blend with the lines of the bike. So seeing it in person, again, I'm able to appreciate it more. And I honestly think combined with function and looks, I feel, I feel like they found a happy medium. Suspension, sported handling, extra inch in the rear. It helps with stronger forces going through the chassis and into your back. The Fox suspension is good. And when it's combined with the syndicate seat, it makes those bumps a bit more tolerable. Throughout the course of the ride, I hit bumps, craters, sewer pipe drains, cow guards. Oh, I didn't even know what the heck a cow guard was. <laughs> oh shit. No suspension can help with that. <laughs> At least not on the bike, I would say. Not on any of these cruisers. <laughs> the four inch suspension, while it did well for the majority of the ride, bumps like that is just, you still feel it, right? But I do think it's a worthy upgrade for those of you that are interested in the Fox suspension and that extra clearance that you're gonna get in the rear will work great for passengers. With the KYB forks that came off of the Challenger, the front end is definitely more responsive, but keep in mind that even though these came off of the Challenger, they are specifically tuned for the Chief's chassis. With raising the rear end up just a tad, you're gonna increase the lean angle from 28.5 to 29.5 degrees. So one extra degree of lean angle and also pulling in that front rate from 29 degrees to 28 degrees. So overall, you're gonna get a faster turn in feel on Sport Chief. It's gonna feel more nimble. But peg scraping, it still does happen even with the increased lean angle. You could say, well, you should be cornering better. Listen, peg scraping is fun. And oh my God, I'm scraping the whole time. <laughs> it's so hard to not scrape this thing. That means I'm not cornering right. Dude, you shot dirt all over him. <laughs> his his black shoes are now are now uh, tan. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. <laughs> Sport Chief comes standard with the Syndicate Solo Seat. It's one of the best seats available for Chief compared to the other options from Indian. This seat has a more firm feel, which I prefer, and that could change as it breaks in more, and it has more bolster to hold you in. If I remember correctly, that's around 3 inches. But you sit more in this seat than on the seats previously, and it has less give when you sit on it, which also helps absorb shock. At this point, we did more riding and eventually we made it to our lunch spot and I had a few words to drop about our story that we had with Chiefs so far. This wind is very strong. Very, very strong. This wind is doing a great job, but it is not protecting me from these crosswinds. Time for some food. Alright, so we're all sitting here enjoying lunch and talking about Sport Chief. Yep. <laughs> and the one thing I thought about was uh, how well the fairing locks in its <laughs> lowest form, the four inch. He's just throwing me off big time. Uh, but as Jess from the leader said, Basically, it will not protect you from those crosswinds. It doesn't do anything. So, it does do a good job. 
<laughs> uh, blocking the wind. So for people like me that are compromising on function versus uh, looks, I think the four inch does a pretty good job at that. But the seat also does a really good job at holding you in. That no point I thought I was going to slide off the back or anything. The, bo the Boyster does. Hey, how much is the Boyster on the seat? Like three, four inches? Something like that. But it holds you in pretty well. But uh, how many miles are we in? Not really sure. I think 40 miles, 50 miles. We're like 40 or 50 miles in here, and um, I can tell you that I'm not feeling super fatigued. Shoulders are starting to get a little sore, but that's typically what happens with me anyway. I can tell you that the bike is overall com comfortable, and um, yeah, I'll let you know fully once you get done with this ride. All right, lunch is done. Getting back on the bikes, but this time I'm getting on a Sport Chief with the 10 inch riser. So now we get a chance to experience that. We can compare it to the six inch, so let's do it. At this point in the ride, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling refreshed. I just had me an Austin, Texas chicken sandwich. <laughs> but I'm also swapping from the six inch risers and the six and a half inch windscreen to the 10 inch risers and the nine inch windscreen. So keep in mind, again, I'm five feet, 10 inches. So at this point, I'm gonna be more upright. My, my arm to my shoulder is gonna be more straight. I'm gonna get more wind protection. And of course, I'm also on the same mid control setup. I'm gonna be a little elevated. It's probably gonna remind me a little bit of the uh, mid riser. We are now in sport mode. It's that simple. And oh my God, the lunch that I had, my stomach is starting to bubble. I am lactose intolerant and it's starting to kick. We're good. Okay, interesting. It reminds me again of the mid risers that you can get on the Challenger, the uh, Chieftain, uh, but I can't really tell you yet. Uh, as far as the wind buffing, I'm feeling a lot of crosswind right now. And like I said, none of these windshields are gonna be able to stop from that or really no bike can really be as protected from crosswinds that, as it can or at least you be protected from crosswinds versus the front. But right now, yeah, this, this thing creates a nice little pocket. I would like to get some longer seat time with all of these on the highway for an extended period to be able to give you guys a, a really good idea of how this thing feels. But right now, man, I'm, yeah, I'm liking it. it, feels good. We hit a few more spots that tested the suspension and brakes and Sport Chief did exactly what it was supposed to do. Having the extra inch of suspension helped Chief not bottom out on those Austin cow guards in the countryside that I had just become acquainted with. <laughs> and whenever I needed to brake hard or abruptly, especially when I was using sport mode, there was no issue other than making sure I didn't grab too much brake. Comparing the braking system on Sport Chief with the new Brembos to the non-Sport Chief model, I've always felt that those brakes were adequate. I never felt like they were soft or they didn't have enough bite. And a lot of people said when, when Chief first came out, like, why didn't they put dual brakes on it? Well, now you have dual brakes. And I got to tell you, on Sport Chief, you got to be careful because those Brembos do yeah. bite. I know everybody's wondering about those brakes. <laughs> one finger push. <laughs> That's all it takes. I use one finger when I'm using the brake. You gotta be careful because you may go over the handlebars depending on how much of an emergency situation that is. So these brakes do bite. And also on Indian braking levers, you do not have the ability to adjust how much pressure it takes to activate or pull that lever in to activate the brake. So when you grab, you're getting full, you getting full brake all the time. That lever is gonna is gonna grab. The brakes, like I said, you can see it, you can see the bike diving. Watch this. Yeah, this curve, watch this. Like that's, that's one finger, that is one finger. That's not two. So that's why I say you have to be very careful with this because you, you, you can't pull too much brake. Even though the Sport Chief uses Brembo's up front, it's gonna be using the same rear caliper that you're gonna find on the other Indian Chief models. This is the rear caliper off of my Indian Chief Dark Horse that I'm rebuilding. It's gonna have the same caliper. It's gonna have that same brake feel. And also the front and the rear brakes are gonna all connect to the ABS module. And if you don't like the ABS module, you can also just delete it. Like I haven't put mine back on, but you can just take it off and just run direct to the That's calipers. Cool. Yeah. Oh, need an MTR for this. This is a beautiful area, though. 
weight at the throttle response in sport mode just when you dip into the curve you just give it a light pull and it just powers you through the curve so smooth linear power of course once you get used to that that twitching is sport mostly but once you get used to it you can easily just it's jerky but once you get used to it once you get used to it uh, i took that a little hot once you get you uh, once you get, <laughs> once you get used to it you can just roll on it just like that it's not see if you just pull it like that then it's gonna be hard to drag it but you just gradually just pull on it it'll give you a satisfying throttle response after this part of the ride through the Austin countryside, which was beautiful and very peaceful, we were back in the city to mob the streets and make some noise in these parks before finally bringing Sport Chief back in to close a solid day of ride. I didn't mention too much about the Thunderstroke powertrain, but you are getting that 116 Thunderstroke as a standard option on Sport Chief. The Thunderstroke in the 111 format has been around for I think 10 years now, and every year Indian is adding little iterations and of course reliability to just make this motor just better. Oh God, I love this motor so freaking much. It's just like it spools up as you're, you're twisting, it's like, it's so good, man. Such a great motor. Especially me knowing how the motor is put together and I've had that intimate moment with the motor It's just being on this thing in another form like this. It is oh, it's so good. It's 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 so good having that connection with these motors is so good Something that you can't see behind the primary cover or the derby cover as some people call it for the 2023 Indian Chief lineup including the sport chief They added a slipper clutch and what that does is when you're downshifting if you don't rev match you know how you blip the throttle as, as you're downshifting? If you don't do that, what it does is it slips the clutch and allows the engine RPMs to catch up to the transmission or the speed of the vehicle. Because the transmission's putting power out to the wheel. And if you downshift and the engine speeds don't match the gearing, it will potentially cause the rear wheel to lock up. And when you're going through these curves and you're speeding up and you're slowing down, you want everything to kind of not lock up. <laughs> so adding that slipper clutch, which is, which is typical on performance-based motorcycles that that makes that less of a possibility so it's a little thing that most people won't notice behind that cover or won't even see it behind that cover because they're not going to take it off but overall it does add value to the platform at the end of our respective stories that we built around this sport chief experience i found that the six inch risers with the six and a half inch fairing that worked best for me the four inch fairing it probably looked the best because it was the lowest profile but it didn't block as much wind then you move up to the six and a half, it blocked more wind, but you compromise on that look a little bit more. And then the nine inch, more blocking, more function, but it probably didn't look the best for most people that don't like fairings on their bikes. However, it did fit the bill with that club style look. So again, for my height, five feet, 10 inches, six inch risers, six and a half inch windscreen, that's where I felt the best for my type of ride style. Looks are super cheap for a subjective, but not everybody agrees with the choice of fairing. And not everybody even agrees that sports shoes should be made. I wasn't a fan of the look at first, but just like everything, once I saw it in person, I got my hands on it, and then seeing sport chief in motion, I appreciate the design more. Once again, one of the coolest parts about the chief platform, in this case, sport chief, and of course you can put this fairing on non sport chief models once you get one of the fairing pieces you can always buy the taller or the shorter piece so let's say you had the four inch fairing right and you go okay i'm about to start doing longer rides you don't have to buy the entire thing you can just buy that piece of the windshield and just swap it out so yeah that's a cooler piece i think most things work well on sport chief besides the few ride command hiccups unlike scout rogue sport chief doesn't feel like a filler bike and i do think it stands out a bit more with the design it has been refined for more reliability and the quality is constantly increasing with each iteration. Luckily, this time I got no engine sister issues unlike the first Chief Encounter and of course, the last Scout Encounter. Listen, that, that bike that bike just straight up died. Like it just went in straight limp mode. <laughs> While quality has increased over time, Indian still has a little bit of work to do with that cable management. It's not perfect, but it definitely, it could have been better. 
Cannon bar set up with the machine risers and the machine triple trees, this is a very clean look. You got one clutch line, one brake line. They're internally wired with the controls and then they come down on the back side of the risers and then bam, you just see cables. And then the ride command, great. Great experience when it works, right? But then you see all those cables, see the GPS cable, the power cables. Indian could have done a little bit better by hiding that because when you don't have the fairing on, on that bike, you see all of that cabling. So I think they could have wrapped that up a little bit better in some type of black tubing, but I can tell you that between the neck of the frame and the tank where that little triangle is, they did add a little bit more cable management there. So it's a nitpick, but look, man, you're spending like 15 grand on this bike at least, or in this case, Sport Chief, 19 grand. So it's progress, but yeah, they, they, they could have done a little bit better with that. Other criticisms, it's called Sport Chief. I felt like Indian could have done a little bit more with that name and gave it a different rear end to make it stand out from the other Chief models and also even added more performance upgrades to the Thunderstroke. But for the price point at $19,000, which is cheaper than some of the other Chief models, Indian put out a pretty good offer. The truth is not everybody wants to work on their motorcycle. The majority just want to get on the bike and ride and they just want it to work. But this book that I've read for quite a while now, The Art of Zen and Motorcycle Maintenance, it talks about two types of riders. You got romantics and you got classics. The romantic riders, they don't care. They just, they just see the bike as a motorcycle. They ride it, it makes them feel good. It's their freedom, it's, it's, it's the thing that, that gets them in a different headspace. Yeah, it's, it's the thing that makes them, them happy, right? Riding makes them happy. But then you got the classic riders that look at the motorcycle in various different pieces. They look at it as, they, they look at the battery system in one way, they look at the crankshaft in one way, they look at, or they think about how the motor is transferring energy through, <laughs> from the crankshaft to the, the clutch basket, to the wheel, and how gasoline is exploding and turning chemical energy into mechanical energy, into electrical energy to charge the bike to keep, that's how a classic person thinks and that's the, the kind of mentality that I've been adopting but I can't tell you the beautiful thing about Sport Chief is that it caters to both sides the Sport Chief from the factory comes as it is so for those people that don't want to wrench and put those pieces on their bike they can just buy it from the factory just like that but it also caters to those of us that want to take those forks off or buy the forks separate and put the forks on and try to put the braking system on our bike or take the fairing and play around with the different settings and get it the right way that we want it. Or get the, uh, the Fox suspension, the four inches, but get the extra ones that we can dial in the rebound and, and the compression. It caters to both sides. And I think that's the thing that I really enjoy most about this platform is that for somebody like myself that has never worked on motorcycles before, I've been able to tear this thing down and learn so much more about it and appreciate it more. So for the romantics out there that just want to hop on the bike and ride, it's there. And for the classic people in us, the mentality that I've been adopting, you can work on this bike and do whatever you want to, to do to it as well. As I always say, the best way for you to find out whether or not this bike or any other bike is for you is to simply go throw a leg over it, put your hands on it, sit on it, look at it in person, and ride it. And if you determine after that that it, that it wasn't for you, at least you put it through the paces and now you know. So yeah, I'm about to get back to rebuilding this bike. If you want to check that out, you can click right here. Yeah. And as always, thanks for watching. Catch you next one.